Yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is okay so tell us who you are and what you do nowadays well my name is John Faber and I am the managing partner of chapter 3 um, I've been working at chapter 3 now for almost five years um, and uh, as the managing well there are two managing partners at chapter 3 Stephanie Cannon is my partner at chapter 3 we both operate the organization uh, sort of from different angles I'm more on a business outside focus and Stephanie is more on a operations inside focus so we complement each other very very well but it's a complete team effort at chapter three we have a wonderful team of developers and we primarily focus in on you know Drupal development Drupal strategy training support <clears throat> and now um, going into the latter part of this year we're focusing a great deal of our energy on being one of the first shops to begin to implement real Drupal 8 sites so that is a challenging, challenging and exciting uh, at this moment right now, but uh, that, that's primarily what I do and who I am. So let's take a step back from Drupal 8 for a second. Talk about being a business person in the open source context. Um, I think that doing business in context of the open source world um, at times uh, has a tendency to what I would say straddle the double yellow line you know what I mean I mean sometimes there's um, making money and then there's contributing contributing back and you know we've tried to do a good job of that uh, for me personally I find that the open source community is just an, an easier place to do business for my personality and for the type of person that I am um, I don't like uh, really structured things. I like things that have, you know, uh, you know, a lot of possibilities, and uh, there is a lot of different solutions that you can outline. You're not sort of selling one product. So for me, I love that. And then when I got involved with Chapter Three, all of a sudden I have this team of people that can really execute anything on this platform. And open source is again goes back to the model of like I don't like being constrained in things. I don't like having edges. Uh, Drupal gives me no edges, and I think that for a businessman, that's been the most exciting part uh, of um, operating and working within the Drupal world is, is that you can really take on any project from a crazy simulator data big model project to just helping universities out to anything you want, and that's what I love about doing business in this open source world. There are other open source worlds, but I, I, I can't speak of those because I've really dedicated my the last 11 years of my professional career to Drupal. So what's something that you've seen along your trajectory uh, in, in open source that you never would have expected? Something just completely took you by surprise. Well, I think the community in a lot of ways took me really by surprise. I didn't expect the type of community to exist behind a software project. Um, that we had, you know, that, that Drupal has and that that kind of caught me off guard in a very positive way. I, I'm, a very, I'm a believer in community. I mean, I got into Drupal by building communities for people of certain interests. Um, and so I really believe that the community was really, really something to me that uh, made, is one of the reasons why I stayed. You asked me before, why did you stay? Community was an amazing thing. The other thing that I found to be quite amazing about our open source world is this before it always sort of you know, in the past, it was sort of like a little pond with people doing stuff and shops and a little ecosystem. And there's been a radical evolution over the last four years or maybe even five years of our community into a very professional business oriented, like we're doing big deals with big companies and like, you know, like I'm traveling and doing stuff and working with like the largest companies around. Um, doing the same open source that I was a number of years ago, and I think that again is something that caught me by surprise. Companies like Acquia have really helped, in a lot of ways, sort of expose the whole world to the power of Drupal. You know what I mean? And that is uh, 
I don't know if it was unexpected, but it is is certainly a it's a nice thing to have happen in our community right now. We are a growing, vibrant, awesome place where um, I don't know. I just this thing is it, it did catch me a little off guard at how much this thing grew up. Yeah. So when you were building that fishing club website, you didn't think that that same technology, you know, would be you'd be working with the Fortune 50 company with no. that thing. No, and you know, I think that hit me when uh, I started working for a company called AF83, who ended up buying Commerce guys. You know, sort of like this, this, the French guys, and you know, they flew me out to DrupalCon Paris, and I'm thinking to myself, my God, uh, here I am in Paris, and it's like this open source project got me out here. These people, it's just, it really started blowing my mind. From that point on, my mind was fully blown, and um, yeah, I would say it was a little bit unexpected. You know, who would have ever known? There is a lot of discussion in the Drupal community right now about the fine line or the difficult line between getting business done, um, you know, paying employees, paying your own rent, and contributing to the project. For, from the Chapter 3's perspective, you know, in October, Chapter 3 will have been an incorporated organization specializing in Drupal for 10 years, right? And we have always been an organization that the the people who started Chapter 3 through the people who work at Chapter 3 and Chapter 3 today has always been focused on helping the Drupal project grow, and that means giving time back. And we don't really look at it as um, making money and giving time back. It's it's all kind of – when we give back to the community, it's the same as making money, right? Because it's like a boomerang. That goodwill goes out and that karma goes out into the community – and it flows around, and maybe a year later or more, it'll turn into business. You know what I mean? So for us, um, our perspective is a little bit different. Um, and I think that it's in the DNA of our organization to give back and to be part of what's going on right now. Um, and we always have been that way. So <clears throat> for, for the discussion to be – for other shops to be like that, potentially it's, it's more difficult because um, – you do have to just basically say, I'm giving away X hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to, for, for, this, for, for, for the project. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like a marketing expense. Is it a marketing expense? Is it not? What is it? Um, for us, it's worked. You know what I mean? I mean, it's worked. And um, I spent no money on marketing at all. I mean, so for me, I can reallocate things and be like, my marketing expense is giving back to the community. And, you know what, Alex, how about this? I'm going to just allocate like my whole marketing expense to you and, and hire you, and you just go, man. Just just go because the karma is out there. It's like a karma stream. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to sound weird about it, but it is. You know what I mean? When you give, give, and give, people, it gives back after time. You know what I mean? And it, this is paying off on our investment with Alex, and it's paid off with our investment not only with Alex but with our investment that we've made into Drupal um, for the last 10 years. Okay, so this is really important. And and first off, uh, thank you for paying Alex Pot to contribute to Core. I mean, that's really incredibly. Uh, it's helped him do the work he wants to do and and live how he wants to. And it's helped the Drupal project. I mean, amazingly. So thank you for that. Um, what interests me, and perhaps in the context of hiring Alex to be a full time Core contributor, how much of this giving back? is, as you say, uh, sort of karma, a karma play, um, positive image that'll, that'll come back to you sometime. And how much is actually entirely pragmatic in that you improve the tools that you're using to make money with your business? You're improving them directly. You have a direct influence on, on them being better and uh, you know the Drupal project working better, looking better for everybody, and therefore, you know, you have better tools to work with. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, Chapter 3's success has always been around the fact that we are, we, we are you know, trying to be a Drupal standard shop that makes things better. And in doing that, we give those tools back to the community. But, of course, for ourselves, it, it works quite well. You know what I mean? And I don't think that we – I mean, for me, giving Alex a, an F, you know, a, a, a good – full-time basic salary for me was driven more by the fact like I need Drupal 8 to come out. <laughs> no one is helping here. 
this is like, what's going on? I watched this for a little while, you know what I mean? And I'm finally, I was just, I talked to my team. I was like, listen, man, I want to just, I, we need this to, we need this trajectory to pick up and I want to do it. Let's just, and they were like, let's, well, we don't care. And boom. We just did it. I don't think that we put like a, if we hire Alex, we're going to get this. We're going to make him do that. Alex is fully self-directed, man. He does what he wants to do right now. I'm not managing him. Nobody on my team manages. My team asks him stuff all the time. And we do have that resource, right? And so maybe that was sort of a subconscious game plan, which was like, okay, I'm going to get this guy on board. Um, I'm going to let him work for about a year. It's been almost a year now of just solid, like, get this thing together, man. And as soon as he starts giving my team, like, messages, like, I think we can build something on this, I'm going to go and sell, like, an enterprise account. And that's going to lock us in. So maybe it was sort of a business plan from my perspective. But, I mean, people need to understand, we don't tell Alex. He's completely on his own, man. We do not ask him to do anything to, um, you know, really, quite honestly, he is just, we just want him to feel as though he can actually succeed at this project. And we know that everyone's boat is going to rise, including chapter threes, and really we're not going to have spent that, that much money. You know what I mean? We'll spend a fair amount, but we will not have spent that much money. And think about what we think about what has happened. We've now transcended. Right. That's and, what you, and you're confident that you're going to reap the benefits of, of Drupal 8 and your investment in Alex many folds. I will. 100%. I have a pile of clients right now that are waiting in the wings. It's the next two years of work for chapter three. You know what I mean? Um, I think, and I think that all of the clients that I've worked on for the last four years to get into these nice infrastructures can easily be upgraded into Drupal 8 and we can actually give them even better stuff. So for me, it's quite important. Thank you for doing it. On the other hand, uh, the fact that it, it ends up being an entirely pragmatic decision is, is, is really reassuring. And I think it's an example that, that a lot of people could follow and and I wonder sometimes I think if you come from um, a non open source background or a non you know business background that this is not completely intuitive. What do you say to the people who haven't been doing open source for eight, ten, eleven years and are are grappling with with the value proposition of open source and 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 you know this the, this combination of of getting work done and 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 making something bigger than all of us. It's a difficult one, right? I mean, some people have it in their head that the, the, the way to do things is to karmically give back at all times, and other people are more uh, locked into the procedure of making money at all times, right? Right, and, so and there's, a, there's, there's, a cost, there's a cost center and there's a profit center, right? Right, and so, you know, what's important, to the, what's important to the person and to the organization? A lot of organizations have a very hard time justifying paying somebody who doesn't do any billable work, you know what I mean? And that is very, very understandable. Uh, chapter three, I was like, we're gonna do it. <laughs> we don't care, we're, gonna, we're, we're smaller decision-making team possibly, and I understand that people that come from a business world may have a hard time with that. Wait, but you say you don't care, but actually it's, you do care, and it's a very calculated decision on your part, and what you care about is getting the next generation of your chosen tool set out and getting it and, and it's the best possible tool set and you get this huge advantage because you have Alex as a, um, like you said, he's your marketing budget, but you also have him as a resource to help your people learn and grow. So so I right. think, I mean, you want to make it sound like like free and easy open source land, but, but you, you're, you know, you're nobody's fool, John. <laughs> I mean, we have, Chapter 3 is a large organization. All of my employees work in downtown San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco is turning into being one of the most expensive cities in the country to operate in. And so, yes, there is a business uh, pressure that we need to deal with, but our business pressure is focused on a specific open source world, and that open source world carries with it certain values that uh, definitely work if you if you, you, if you if you use those, I mean, that's why we do, we do, uh, I've done SF Doug for the last seven years. You know what I mean? We do use, we do like four user focused groups every month at chapter three. Um, and so we're constantly doing this, but what do those groups do? Constant participation in groups gives you exposure to people who are very interested in Drupal and those people might want to work for me. <laughs> it's like I could pay a recruiter or I could run SF Doug all, you know what I mean? So it's all interlinks, right? And I think that it's sort of the mentality of chapter three that we have a little bit more of a 
it seems like on the outside, a little bit more of a mellow way of doing things, but we've also developed a process for doing business in San Francisco and staying successful in what we do, which is a very tight niche. So, do you have a call to action for people who are on the cusp and think that they might contribute, but they're not quite there yet? I think that I would say, give it a try. <laughs> see what happens. Let's see what happens when all boats rise because people have contributed into the ocean of development. I think that really it's like, it's kind of almost a no brainer. The, the, the karmic value will come back to you and the business will come back to you and maybe employees will come back to you. And all of those things are very important for running a Drupal shop. And quite honestly, the investment is, is, isn't that, that great. And um, plus you'll just have, you know, you'll feel good about yourself. <laughs> You know, and I think that it works. It's really not that much of a financial business decision, in my opinion. If like if you're really into the Drupal 8 stuff and like you need that feeds module working, go find the feeds guy and give him a job and say, hey, man, fix that thing and make it kick ass for everybody. Right. And then all of a sudden you can go sell your projects for the tell you blue in the face. So I think that it works all the way around. You know what I mean? And I know that there are core contributors out there right now that could use a full time salary. Um, and I think that that would increase the trajectory of our project and that would make everybody's boat rise. And that's an important thing to support. Thank you, John. And thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. I'm really, really happy that we, we finally got the chance to do yeah, it. Thank you. thank you for all your contributions and, and, and for running such a great Drupal shop. Well, it's not just me, it's my team, but thank you. And we appreciate it. And uh, we'll see all you guys at DrupalCon.